Good morning, everyone. We are about to start in a couple of minutes, just to wait for the last uh, person from the audience. <clears throat> so, good morning everyone. My name is uh, Lorenzo Paschini. I'm a senior service engineer at uh, TechImp, Altanova Group, now part of Double. And today we're going to speak about high voltage cable PD test during uh, commissioning. First, we will go into a brief introduction about Altanova. Altanova is a company that provides the diagnostic solution and services for electrical testing. We are uh, started our journey in 1938 uh, with the foundation of ESA Instruments in uh, Taino, Italy, and uh, on the parallel side on the foundation of 1999 of TechIMP, born as a spin-off of the University of Bologna in Bologna, Italy. In 1217, ISA and Tekimp merged together, giving birth to Altanova Group, that lately acquired Intelliso, a Boston-based company dedicated to medium voltage monitoring system in 2019. And finally, in 2021, Altanova Group became part of the ESCO family under the umbrella of uh, Double for the engineering company as part of the Utility Solution Group division. The history of Double starts uh, more than 100 years ago and has recently uh, achieved many interesting uh, industrial partnership uh, and acquisition. As you can see, in the last years, we were merged into Double together with the Phoenix. And in the, late, in the previous years, uh, some other interesting companies have merged, the, have, have joined the Double family as Manta, Morgan Shafter, and Vanguard. Today, Altanova is present in more than 100 countries. We have 12 facilities spread around the world. We have more than 150 employees and uh, an equal number of sales partner and a huge number of uh, customer globally. You can see on the bottom side of the page, uh, the brands, those are part of uh, Double. So we have Double based in uh, US, ESA, based in Italy, Morgan Shafter, a brand dedicated to diesel gas analysis, Phoenix, that is based in Accident in the US and is a manufacturer of high voltage testing equipment. We have Tekimp that is specialized in partial discharge testing and Vanguard instrument based in California for offline testing of circuit breakers and relay. In Altanova, we have, uh, we can, let's say, divide our uh, portfolio into three main families. We are producers of electrical testing equipment. Under the different brands, we can provide a huge portfolio of testing solution. We are as well offering professional services uh, in terms of uh, training, uh, consultancy, diagnostic testing, uh, and also data analysis. And uh, the third part of our portfolio is composed by the permanent monitoring system. So all the monitoring system, those are becoming very popular nowadays thanks to digitalization to shift from a time-based maintenance uh, philosophy to a condition-based maintenance philosophy. We are focused mainly on predictive maintenance and to avoid all possible faults that can occur in our customers facilities. 
our solution covers a huge range of uh, electrical assets uh, from transformers to cables to switch gears to um, instrument transformer and the rotating, as well as rotating machine and variable speed drives. Into our family, you can find probably a de the dedicated solution for the single asset that you need to monitor and that you want to prevent from unwanted failures and problems. Today, we are going to talk about the PD testing during HV cable commissioning. These are the main topics that we will walk through our presentation. First, we will see a little bit of what are the common after laying tests in high voltage cable. We will focus then on PD testing on HV cable. We will focus on which sensor we use for the HV cable's accessories, what are the possible solutions that we can use. And we will see the combination of the cable commissioning practices with the PD testing. We will then go a little bit deeper into this argument by comparing the RTS solutions versus the SOC test solution for cable commissioning. We will see what are the challenges for partial discharge testing, some uh, brief introduction of the PD localization techniques, and then some case studies from the site. So, once the long process of uh, cable installation is concluded, there are some main, main tests. Those are commonly uh, used by utilities or uh, final customer. We can start from simple insulation resistor, resistance. We check the integrity, integrity of um, the sheets. We can check the integrity of the surge voltage limiter. We check as well the cont contact resistance inside our link boxes, together with the conductor resistance of the wall HV cable circuit. And uh, then to check the insulation of the system, it is a common practice to perform an high voltage AC test together with a partial discharge test. So when we focus about partial discharge testing in cable, uh, we are, let's say, testing a final uh, installation project. Uh, uh, a group of different uh, objects is told together in a long uh, process. We have the cable drums, we have the accessories, we have the joints, we have the interaction between determination and eventual GS switch gear. All these components have been already tested in the factory. And uh, nowadays, uh, the PD findings are quite min minimized by all the quality processes those are involved in this uh, process and uh, we can find uh, partial discharge phenomena in uh, a small percentage of uh, of the tested of the tested hv cable luckily normally the pd that we can the partial discharge phenomena that we can find those are obviously related to the fact in the in the in the system are due to a poor installation are due to, to some mechanical damages of the accessory components, some misplacement in the accessories installation. We can have some air pockets or a gas bubbles trapped in the insulation enclosure. Or we can also find some defect in the stress control components of the accessories. So statistically, the weakest part where we normally have defect, those can be detected thanks to partial discharge, are cable joints and termination, because these are the critical points during the installation. All the cable drums are widely tested in the factory and the production is very well supervised in terms of quality. So our approach will be to focus on the joints and termination mainly. And we are lucky because uh, these are as well the only access point that we can have many times on site. Here in this picture, we can see a very short uh, HV cable circuit from a GIS substation to a outdoor ceiling end with two joint bays. And uh, we will focus on the ground leads of the termination on the two sides and on the link boxes of the two joints in the, in the middle. 
normally the, um, the sensor that we use uh, in uh, cable testing for commissioning are high frequency current transformer. They are very, very widely used in this uh, testing session. We can clamp this high frequency current transformer around the ground leads of the termination and joint, and we can detect the partial discharge pulses and characterize these pulses in terms of polarity and amplitude, and also in terms of the shape of the pulse that can give us as well some information about the defect. In some other cases, if it is specified by the utility or by the final user, it is also possible to have a PD sensor embedded in the joints or termination. And uh, this is a good uh, practice and they are a very good detection point uh, that can be used for surveys, but uh, needs to be specified during the tendering process of the cable circuit. Other solution that we have to, let's say, test partial discharge if we, do, we cannot use a high frequency current transformer or if we don't have embedded sensor are flexible magnetic couplers. So this sensor, they can be placed over the cable and they can couple with the a sheet of the cable and pick up some of the PD signals. We will lose something in terms of signal quality, but uh, we will have the flexibility to use this sensor all along the cable. On the bottom side of the slide, we can see an UHF antenna that is not exactly designed for cable testing. It is designed for GIS testing, but can be very, very efficient in uh, detection of partial discharge occurring at the GIS termination or transformer termination of the cable circuit. In the next slide, we will briefly see uh, some uh, typical installation that we can uh, have of PD sensor on the different accessories. Here we have a GIS termination where we can, of course, use high frequency current transformers on the uh, ground leads of the um, termination or on the jumper across the insulating ring of the GIS spacer. We can as well use a UHF antenna on the insulating spacer of the termination. And in case we cannot use these syst systems, we still have uh, some options. We can use the flexible magnetic coupler along the cable, or in case we have embedded sensor, we can connect our PD instrument to the embedded sensor and take the readings. From such, so from, such, from such detection point. A few words about um, GIS termination testing. Uh, thanks to the SF6 insulation and to the controlled environment, we are normally dealing with the low noise in uh, GIS termination testing. And uh, it is, we can reach uh, easily a uh, quite good uh, sensitivity without using uh, uh, software or hardware filtering tools. Instead, if we focus on uh, outdoor termination, we are limited to use uh, the high frequency current transformers on the ground lead. We can then use uh, eventually flexible magnetic couplers along the cable. And in case we have embedded sensor, we can take advantage of these ones. When we are testing, high voltage cable outdoor termination, we will uh, face uh, several issues with uh, external discharges occurring in the surf outer surface of the termination that can be led to uh, dirt on the, on the bushing, uh, to uh, an improper spacing and some uh, sharp edges uh, that we can, uh, let's say, have, and they are exposed to the air. It is a good practice, and we will also talk about that in the next slides, to take proper precaution in order to minimize external surface discharges on the outdoor termination, in order to have a clean and, uh, sen and a very, very sensitive uh, acquisition on these uh, detection points. Last, 
uh, we will focus also on the high voltage cable joints. In this case, uh, we, there are some limitations depending on the layout of the joint. In some cases, we will have accessible joint so we can place our sensor nearby the bonding cable just next to the joint. In uh, other cases, uh, we will only have access to the link boxes of this high voltage cable joint. In some few cases, uh, uh, we will have as well the uh, eventual uh, PD embedded PD sensor in the joint with a dedicated uh, box where we can pick up the signals to perform our PD measurement. Mm. Normally, uh, the joints uh, are uh, characterized by a good signal to noise ratio. If we are getting away far from the, let's say, ends of the cable, all, with, uh, all the external uh, disturbances that we can find we will, we will be attenuated and uh, we will have uh, a very low noise level. So all the eventual PD phenomena will be highlighted. So it's um, time for the first pool. I leave the audience to Jessica. Okay, thank you, Lorenzo. Uh... So now it's your turn. We kindly ask you to answer this question in the next few seconds. Let's read it together. What is your uh, experience on PD sensors using cable commissioning? No partial discharge test performed. Partial discharge test performed using high frequency current transformers. Partial discharge test using UHF antennas near the tested accessory. Okay, so we will leave you a few seconds to answer. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Let's close the pool and show the results. Thank you, Jessica. It's interesting to see how a good percentage of the audience uh, did not uh, till now perform partial discharge, partial discharge during the HV cable commissioning. If I can spend a few words on that, uh, uh, let's say that uh, even if it's not mandatory from uh, the regulation, uh, it is a good practice and it's, let's say, getting more and more uh, more and more popular in uh, internal utilities uh, standards. And uh, let's say that in terms of uh, the value that can bring the PD test carried out uh, during the HV cable commissioning, it is a good value because it ensures the quality of the installation of the cable, it prevents failures due to installation defect, and uh, it is, uh, let's say, a good opportunity to perform a test under, uh, let's say, uh, how to say, under good circumstances, because we are already testing the cable, we are already stressing the insulation. So it's a very good moment to check if this voltage stress is giving a partial discharge signal, even if it is passing the HVAC test. About the other uh, two questions, the, the, the two main, uh, the two main uh, let's say, sensor use are a high frequency current transformer and we can see some UHF, uh, uh, UHF uh, antennas. That is more or less what I've expected that the majority of the people those have experience in PD testing have been using high frequency current transformer, but there are still cases where UHF sensor are still accepted and they can be also effective in testing the, uh, let's say, termination without uh, focusing too much on the rest of the cable. <clears throat> so thanks for answering this first pool. It was very interesting from our side. And we can move on to the next slide. So going a little bit into practice, uh, during uh, HV cable commissioning, the, the standards, the ISC standards for uh, high voltage underground cable, uh, they specify to perform a voltage test on the cable. That can be a one hour test injecting a 
uh, voltage in the cable that is higher than the rated voltage. It is suggested between 1.1 rated voltage phase to ground up to 1.7 rated voltage phase to ground um, by the mean of an external power supply. Or we can run a 24 hour soak test. So we connect our cable to the grid and we leave it for 24 hours with no load to, to stress a little bit the insulation after the installation. This kind of test is uh, almost always performed on a new cable circuit and it's a pass not pass test so or we have a fault or the test is passed we can see how uh, different uh, let's say different tests are built around this specification for example in my career i've seen one hour hvac test at twice the rated voltage of the of the cable. I've seen tests at 1.1, at 1.7. There is still some flexibility and it is normally a deal between the final customer and the cable manufacturer or installation company. Let's take a look at the single one where we are performing a SOC test. So we are energizing the cable for 24 hours. We are not overstressing the insulation. We are just applying for 24 hours the voltage stress that will be applied to the cable system for all its uh, lifetime. It is possible to perform the PD test during the SOC test. The common practice is to have a temporary monitoring uh, on the 24 hours uh, duration or to perform some spot measurement during this 24 hour duration on the uh, single accessories of the cable circuit. The other option, the HVAC test, one hour where we are injecting a higher voltage respect to the, to the rated voltage of the cable is normally performed thanks to a resonant testing system. So we can have variable frequency systems or variable inductance systems. Those find the resonant point of the whole cable circuit and we can inject a voltage under our control so we can increase the voltage we can decrease the voltage we can decide which ramp of voltage we can use in this test it is uh, quite uh, popular we can also use more than one unit depending on the cable length and the cable volt and the voltage that we want to apply these units are normally placed over trucks like the one in the picture and we need a low voltage generator to feed them. The control can be performed from the inside of the system and we can uh, tune the voltage and we can also, let's say, uh, evaluate the partial discharge depending on the applied voltage as an advantage. So the first, uh, uh, the easiest, let's say, the easiest way to test is to perform a SOC test. We just connect our cable, we have uh, 24 hours, but still we are not over, over, uh, over stressing the voltage. We cannot change the voltage that we are applying, so we cannot evaluate what is the, partial dis the eventual partial discharge inception voltage and what is the eventual partial discharge extinction voltage. Those are two key parameters historically used in partial discharge diagnostics. We can also miss some smaller PD activities just because they are, there is a defect, but maybe the inception voltage is slightly over the rated voltage. So for the 24 hours, no PD will be activated, but the defect can still be present and can still give problems and being dangerous for the cable integrity. Another point that uh, is not, let's say, uh, it's not helping the testing engineer is that uh, when we are connecting the cable to the, to the grid, we are taking into our measuring uh, circuit as well the noises and disturbances from the network. So we are not separated from the rest of the network. And also we are testing all the three phases together. We cannot, let's say, connect one phase only and then it's commonly 
a test performed on, the, on all three phases together. So we can see some points, pro and cons on the SOC testing versus the offline testing. In the SOC, uh, uh, we are depending on the utility. We can uh, give some headache to the to the utility managers uh, if we have some failures. We introduce uh, noise from the from the grid and from the network. We also have noises from the adjacent phases because we are testing all the phases together. We cannot decide to test one phase only if we have any doubt. A good point is that uh, we there is a lower effort in terms of people involved in the test. We don't have an external uh, resonant testing system. We are not, uh, let's say, involving uh, too many people in the test. Again, as a bad point, we are limited in terms of voltage. We cannot change the applied voltage. We cannot evaluate inception and extinction voltage. Last, it's uh, cheaper respect to the offline testing because we don't have to deal with the uh, RTS availability and prices, but we only have to deal with the utility capabilities of giving us the voltage to the cable circuit under test. From our perspective, the, the preferred solution is the offline testing. The first reason is very simple we are overstressing the cable and uh, it's very good to detect PD, to partial discharge. The voltage is the engine of the partial discharge. So if we have chance to measure partial discharge at an higher voltage, that is the best PD test that we can perform. And on the second side, uh, if we work in a separated environment from the utility with a different frequency, we can have uh, much, um, much higher sensitivity. We can easily separate the external uh, disturbances from what is occurring in our cable. And uh, we can also select phase by phase our, our uh, cable tested, and we can understand many things by just energizing or de-energizing the phase. Here we have uh, an example of the advantages of uh, doing an offline test versus a SOC test. These are the same acquisition taken during a RTS test, where we have a mix up of the signals related to the pre resonance frequency, so related to the applied voltage from the RTS, mixed up with the 50 Hertz signals related to the surrounding substation noises. You can see on the left, we have the PRPD pattern synchronized with the resonant, and on the right, it is synchronized with the grid frequency. The importance of the frequency here is super clear. Once we are synchronized with the resonant frequency, the single noise from the RTS and the single HV connection disturbance are clearly displayed, while on the black cluster, we have a strange pattern uh, visualized. If we synchronize the very same acquisition with the 50 Hertz, we can see how the black pattern is synchronized with the 50 Hertz, while the RTS noise and the HV connection disturbances related to the resonant test system are not correlated with the frequency. This is a typical case when we can appreciate the different frequency analysis. If the same cable was tested on a SOC test, the black phenomena due to the external surface dis disturbances in the substation were mixed up with the signals coming from our test object. And that is a big, big, uh, uh, let's say, advantage that we can have working at different frequencies. Another uh, point that can be explored in offline testing is uh, if is it possible to perform the test uh, uh, point by point, uh, jumping from one place to another, or if possible to perform the test altogether. 
of course it's a balance between cost and time if we have a, a sequential test we will have a test performed normally after the hvac and we will have our operator jumping up and down on the circuit we will have um, electrical stress uh, only during the shot we will need the several voltage application to finish the job but on the other on the other uh, side we have uh, a lower impact in terms of cost we don't need any specific communication infrastructure we don't need too much hardware and we can still control the the, the voltage during the test so performing the test sequentially point by point is normally a cheaper solution in terms of uh, testing team in terms of equipment necessary to perform the test but of course we will have longer test session because we need to complete a whole uh, circuit and uh, we will have a little bit of uh, changing in change we are not let's say testing in the in the most stressing moment of the hvac we are just uh, inducing again the stress for short times if we have time if we have mm, sorry if we have the solution to perform the test simultaneously so or we have a big team of testing engineer that can uh, locate themselves in every accessory in every joint in every termination or if we have uh, uh, a good infrastructure of uh, communication and acquisition unit we can think about uh, testing all the uh, detection points simultaneously so we can have uh, a testing team uh, obvious, always uh, checking the data for each detection point and we can include the PD test just during the one hour HVAC. We can perform a pre-test at lower voltages to set up uh, eventual filters to troubleshoot eventual problems and then we can run the PD test during the HVAC, taking advantage of the most stressing moment of the cable lifetime in terms of applied voltage. Of course, we will need a bigger testing team, a few more acquisition unit, and in case uh, we want to do it remotely, we will need a network along the cable circuit that is normally mm, granted by a fiber optic network. So if we have to compare the two tests, uh, we have some uh, diagnostic advantages in simultaneous. So we have a most more homogeneous stress on the accessories. We can uh, easily check different, different X, X, uh, HV accessories uh, just by calling our colleague or just by connecting to a different device. We will also have a shorter shorter uh, test but we will have a higher preparation of the test higher cost and also higher uh, effort from the contractors to uh, block the traffic to prepare the manuals and and so on and so on or at least we will need more teams altogether instead of a single team working for maybe more than one day from the diagnostic point of view so if uh, talking about the the quality of the test that you can achieve of course the simultaneous testing uh, is a preferred solution because we can have a simultaneous control of what we see we can have a correlation between different testing points and we can manage our time uh, more depending on the data stream than on the let's say site condition we don't have to hurry so much as the sequential we know that we have one hour and we are planning to do whatever we need to do in that one hour without uh, jumping from one place to another or without um, uh, having some dubs on the signal if it's coming from this joint or the previous joint and we come to pool number two that is about uh, an opinion that you may have on this solution please jessica thank you lorenzo 
Okay, so here we have the second question for everybody. Uh, what solution would you prefer for offline commissioning, sort test, offline sequential, or offline simultaneous? Okay, so we leave you a few seconds to reply. I'm seeing that 30% uh, of you is voting. So let's wait a few seconds. Okay, so five. Four, three, two, one. Let's close the pool and show the results. Thank you, Jessica. So uh, I see that, uh, let's say, my lesson was appreciated by the audience as well. From a diagnostic point of view, the simultaneous test is always a preferable solution. There is normally a little bit more. Uh, problem to find the, the resources to have a, a big testing team and to orga manage this testing team in order to work all together during the single one hour of HVAC. But that of course is better for the cable. So we are testing it. We are not, let's say, we are testing that cable at our higher voltages just one time. And uh, we can take advantage of, uh, let's say, multiple point of view on the same cable under test. I can understand as well why many people prefer the SOC test so we don't have to run after uh, RTS system. Uh, they can be first a little bit of um, expensive and they can be a little bit hard to manage with the same tight construction schedule that can normally have some fluctuation and some delays. But still, from the diagnostic point of view, the SOC test uh, is not stressing as much the cable as we would like it to be during the PD test. So it's the uh, easiest way, but it, it has got its own uh, dark side, let's say. Not, not, let's say, preferable solution from a diagnostic point of view. We can move forward. Let's see some of the challenges that uh, all the testing engineers have in PD testing. The first challenge is always a lack of time. So there is not, uh, everything is uh, scheduled and we need to fix that schedule or we also need to reduce our schedule because of site problems. We need also to, another challenge is to uh, being able to identify the signals those are external to our equipment under test or the signals those are due to the connection between the RTS and our cable. They, they will be synchronized with the resonance frequency, but they are not a problem in the insulation. They are maybe just uh, improper spacing of the HV temporary connection or some sharp edges in the tip of the outdoor termination. Another challenge that we have that in long circuits, we may face a cost explosion of the test in terms of duration, and in terms of uh, uh, rental of RTS or other site equipment. Let's see a little bit uh, the reason why the lack of time is not is normally a big challenge. So the the cable owner will always want to limit the voltage stress that we apply to the cable. So if we have one hour HVAC that is suggested by the standard everyone would like to stick to that one hour HVAC without over going out of the regulation. Another big uh, point to be considered for the time of the test is that we need to reduce the site effort. We may need to have uh, traffic control crews, we may need to have police for traffic control, and uh, we also have probably to put on service the cable in a few days and maybe still some activities have to be performed before the connection of the cable and everything is at the end of the project is normally 
uh, quite in a rush. Also, reduce the all the rental cost of the equipment. And uh, many times we will be asked to, let's say, try to save some time to retrieve or minimize the project delays because the PD test always comes at the end of the construction. So the target for us should be to limit the testing time without affecting the quality. Trying to be 100% uh, prepared, try to do not waste uh, uh, time, uh, try to organize everything uh, and uh, make every moment that we have with the cable available our best uh, uh, take out the best of every moment that we have without wasting hours and other people's uh, time other other uh, challenge that we have mainly with soc test is to deal with the substation disturbances so statistically uh, <laughs> More than 70 or 80 percent of the cable will end uh, ends will uh, will be at a substation site. Sometimes we also have a cable with the two ends between two substation or two ends between the same substation. So we have to deal with the, the disturbances coming from the normal 50 years environment. What we should do? We should be able to understand what is internal to our system and what is external. We can uh, do that by placing uh, the sensor before the test to try to address already the uh, noise sources that we have in the substation to recognize them and to have a well-proven uh, well proven data that shows that uh, some, fun can, some, some kind of PD activities can be measured, but they're actually due to an external surface far away from our test object. It's a challenge and uh, we need to deal with that, especially the uh, very, let's say, a very hard point on this, uh, on this challenge is that it's pretty much unpredictable what we can find. So we need to take some time at the beginning of the site visit to understand the potential disturbances that we can have during the test. Similar, but uh, from a different point of view, is uh, are the disturbances coming from the HV connection between the RTS and uh, the cable under test. So, normal, the RTS guys are pretty good in uh, reducing all the possible corona and discharges in this pipe. Some good practice are just to avoid the sharp edges, clean the bushing surfaces before the test, use a quite big, uh, uh, pipes to make the connection and uh, something that is the, not so much uh, popular as it should in my opinion is to use uh, double corona rings for the connection because uh, the, the pipe itself uh, can be easy to fix but if we don't have a double connection a uh, double ring on the termination and we are testing a 400 kV cable we will have some ethical field uh, I electrical field point nearby the cable termination on the tip of the cable termination that give us some signals. So one may stand, one may one uh, good practice would be to identify where there are poor connection, try to rectify everything, and also try to suggest the RTS uh, operators to provide or to uh, to provide the the bushing or even to produce a very simple bushing just by making a donut with the with a flexible pipe is always better than anything to reduce these disturbances. Last, that is a big challenge and it's a let's say more uh, uh, project uh, challenge is that when we are doing a long circuit, we have to plan it at our best we cannot think to if we have a 30 more than 30 joint uh, cable we cannot think to inject uh, voltage uh, 10 times in the same uh, in the same uh, asset so try to understand what can be the best solution try to understand how we can minimize uh, the voltage stress of the cable and to minimize the site activities time to do not have a cost explosion uh, we have some our let's say one of our best performances was were to test uh, uh, more than 200 uh, accessories in four days. 
we had to build the communication infrastructure along the cable so we took let's say uh, one more than one day to prepare everything to install the all the acquisition unit to set up the communication in order to reduce the test time of the six phases to it was a double circuit to one and a half day and uh, being able to remove everything uh, in uh, in, uh, in the last fourth day that is uh, let's say something that we need to take into account where we move through longer cable circuit we have to deal with uh, with the time and we have to deal with the with the the solution that we can provide to the customer we need to reduce the effort and the stress of the cable during this test Rule number three, Jessica, please. Okay, so here is the last pool. Uh, what do you expect to be the most challenging issue for the partial discharge test? Substation is disturbances, high voltage connection disturbances, or time and cost? Okay, 50% of you are voting. Let's wait a few seconds. Okay, so five. Four, three, two, one, and two, the results. Thank you, Jessica. So you're welcome. Common, uh, common uh, way of thinking: uh, we need to reduce time and cost for the customer. It's always a key point. My best suggestion is to build proper procedure and avoid all the possible uh, let's say time waste that we can have on site uh, a good practice is to, to prepare a checklist to have everything uh, double checked before the the beginning of the test because we will have a limited time and uh, every second will be money for someone else then the other two problems are both important uh, the hv connection disturbance is related to the rts and the uh, substation disturbance is more related to the SOC test there is always a part of experience in understanding these signals but a good uh, approach from my point of view is to be curious whenever we find a signal we will we should be able to to try something to address it to its to its source this can be done through energization and denergization, through different sensor utilization, and most important, through the study of the signal, deep study of the signal that we have. Let's move along. So, uh, brief uh, point on the localization techniques. So, mm, there are mainly three, uh, three different, uh, let's say, approaches for PD localization techniques that can be applied during uh, p offline PD testing. Amplitude and frequency analysis, so P PD pulse amplitude and frequency analysis. The time domain reflectometry studied on the single PD pulse and the arrival time analysis of the pulses. The first one is the, from my experience, uh, the easiest and the most reliable in terms of high voltage cable commissioning because our focus will be always on the accessories. The statistics says us that uh, higher percentages of problems are in the cables and termination. Our procedure will go through the test of all the cable and termination. We will be able to see PD in different location, but by study, the amplitude and the frequency domain of the 
pulses acquired at different location, we can address the PD source. The reflectometry is the second, uh, second uh, method presented here. It's a more precise, of course, but we have uh, some limitation due to the boundary condition. First, uh, to, have reflect to have reflection, the best thing is to have an open end of the cable. So we will have the full reflection of the signal. But we will also have to deal with the length of the cable because the length will bring attenuation. So it can be hard to, uh, to identify the, the peaks of the reflection if the cable is very long because we will have a strong attenuation of the signal. In the short circuit can be a very helpful uh, tool. In longer circuit, uh, I will still uh, prefer the, um, the amplitude frequency analysis. Last, the arrival time analysis. Uh, we have some solution on the market to, to get the signal uh, synchronized in time with the uh, GPS, for example. But even in this case, uh, we need to deal with the, the attenuation along the cable and to the combination of the same PD pulse uh, to the PD source. So it's a little bit more tricky respect to the amplitude frequency. It can be, in some cases, very straightforward. In other cases, uh, we may have issues in finding the second uh, detection point, for example, or to match the pulses, for example. Now we will have, uh, just to conclude this presentation, a series of uh, case studies of uh, partial discharge uh, found during uh, HV cable termination. This first case is a short 132 kV cable. We had um, one termination GIS and one was a transformer termination. It was a sequential test, so we were testing first just the GIS termination with HFCT. And uh, here is the signal that we were able to find at the GIS termination. The PRPD pattern on the right tells us it should be an internal PD, but if we look at the frequency, it's not as high as we expect we would expect higher frequencies if the PD is source in our detection point. So we double check with the determination with a UHF antenna and we could not find any signal. So that puzzled a little bit us. The first option was of course to test the other end of the cable where we had a more defined pattern, where we had a much, much higher frequency component of the PD pulses detected with HFCT and where the combination of uh, UHF and PD was giving the same, uh, the same uh, diagnosis, so to have a PD on, uh, this, on, the, on the termination. Second case, uh, uh, it was outdoor NGIS, here I made a typo on the termination type, 132 HV cable, 58 meters, so even in this case was a substation connection, this is our uh, GIS. We had placed our HFCT on the GIS jumpers. We had a rare TS system. So we started to inject the voltage and at 90 kV, we were already finding uh, a PD phenomena with high frequency component occurring at the GIS side. It was increased again by 10 kV, the, the, the voltage as per customer request to formalize that it was a PD. The same phenomena was showing higher amplitude and the PRPD pattern was evolving. So it was decided to interrupt the test and to open the JS termination to check, uh, to perform visual inspection where uh, some burning traces were found on the, on the stress cone of the GIS terms and it was replaced with a new one. Another case, uh, 400 kV cable, longer, about four kilometers termination GIS and we have used a PD and embedded the sensor. So first PD measurement, uh, we have we were able to see on the first, uh, on the top right on the inter pattern, some signal mixed up. So it was a 50 hertz signal disturbances with a flat behavior along the phase angle with something more concentrated here nearby the zero crossing. By separating the signals with the time frequency mapping, 
we were able to find the uh, DPD. It was decided to perform uh, inspection and a cleaning of the GIS termination, but still uh, the DPD phenomena was found there. So it went, in the end, the, the customer went for a replacement of the wall termination. Another case study, 220 kV, short cable. Uh, we were testing the joint at the limb boxes by placing the frequency current transformer on the jumper cable between the two sides of the bonding cable coming from the joint. And uh, we were able to see on the PT data different clusters in terms of frequency. At lower frequency, we had some surface corona discharge occurring in the high voltage connection with the red cluster, a super classic internal partial discharge phenomena, and with the black cluster, some background noise. So we have found this uh, phenomena at the joint bay one. The same uh, measurement was performed in joint bay two, and it was possible to recognize the same phenomena, but characterized with the, by a lower amplitude and a lower, a lower equivalent frequency. So the study on the amplitude and frequency pointed the PD source in joint bay number one. That was the last case studies. Uh, here in this slide, you can see some of the upcoming uh, webinars from the Altanova family that you can have uh, this month. Mm, you can see the same uh, calendar on our website and you can uh, subscribe uh, from the uh, from the from the website to a different uh, webinar. I can invite you also to always take a look at our upcoming uh, webinars. Now, uh, still we have a few minutes. I will try to take some some uh, questions from the software here from the go to software let's see if there is something that you have asked that i can try to clarify the the webinar will be recorded and you can uh, download it from the website as well together also with the past webinars then we have uh, mm, Share the recording, yes. Uh, there will be a certificate uh, uh, for you guys to participate, for the participation that will be um, sent uh, through GoToWebinar, if I'm not wrong. Then let's see if I can have some other, I cannot see in the chat. And uh, we do not have other question, if I'm not wrong. Okay, I can add something. Mm, allora, let me just try to. We are having ongoing commissioning for new week one of the work. So there was there is an, one experience from one of you guys with some uh, site problems on a GIS termination because of uh, some cuts on the cable and. Uh, it was uh, failed, it's, so it's quite common to have, unfortunately, some uh, uh, issues on site. Is there a reason for me? Is there a reason uh, the PD polarity is negative for the positive valve cycle? I, mean, I guess it was one of the um, case studies. Uh, the polarity of the of the pulse depends on uh, where is the sensor and where is the PD source. We were, when we are using high frequency current transformer, the polarity should be direct depending on the direction of the of the of the HFCT. 
we are supposed uh, to have uh, direct polarity if the pulse is sourced let's say aligned with the arrow so it's coming from the from the place to the earth from the test object to the earth or can be mm, indirect polarity if it's going against the arrow in the in, in the cable case uh, we are basically connecting the two the two sheets from uh, the two sides of the joints together so depending on where is the source respect to the sensor to the to the sensor position and direction we can have a direct and indirect polarity the study of this polarity can lead us uh, to uh, a proper identification how to test cable join how oh, to test cable joint for cable trench with cable which is already back filed um i'm not sure i've understood the question and maybe we can try to answer to you also by email but normally the 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 link boxes of the cable are always accessible and we normally try to use the link boxes to test the cable if we do not have access neither to the link box uh, we can try to test it from the nearby accessories joints or termination and uh, consider the attenuation of the pd but it will be more let's say hard to do it the criterion for max pd in millivolt or nano coulomb calibration so uh, on site uh, normally we do not use uh, EAC 60270 bandwidth uh, so we don't want to measure the apparent charge we just because it's also even harder to measure the apparent charge respect to laboratory our approach is to use ultra wideband instrument by measuring the PD pulses in millivolt and for high voltage cable there is no acceptable uh, PD on uh, on cable as per our experience if you have a PD on the you call we are called to test the cable just after the installation. They are not supposed to have PD at the, at the voltage, uh, at, the, at, the, at the test voltage. So our policy is to have a zero PD in high voltage cable commissioning. The important thing is to have, um, rec to recognize where the PD are coming, where the signal is coming from the cable or from the external surrounding. And also to be sure that we have an acceptable, an acceptable, uh, sensitivity and this can be done by injecting a pulse and see what is our background noise and what is our the minimum amplitude of the of the pulse that we can measure we have the rts of phoenix can you guide us to use uh, to test pd of course i can uh, i will answer this one maybe my email since now we are part of the same family and i will be happy to to support you uh, basically with the Phoenix RTS, we can perform offline testing. We can combine the voltage stress and measure the PD test with the higher voltage stress. There are several ways to, to do it, depending on the market and on the customer requirement. The, the, standard, the standard answer that I can give you guys is that if you are using the RTS, whenever we are injecting the higher voltage in the cable, I would like to measure the PD in that moment. Another question about the polarity. So again, in uh, in cable, uh, in cable is um, depending on the on the HFCT position and HFCT polarity, and where is the source of uh, of um, of the PD source. So I guess that we can uh, finish by now. Uh, some other questions are a little bit more specific, and I will uh, let's say try to reach our uh, folks uh, by email. It was a pleasure to present to you uh, such uh, such topic. Uh, it's uh, let's say a big big percentage of my job experience uh, as a testing engineer. It is a challenging topic, and uh, if you need uh, further information, do not hesitate to write us. In the last slide, there is also my 
uh, email address. Uh, we have uh, also support personnel uh, worldwide. And uh, do not miss out the next webinar. I leave the words to Jessica and thank you so much for your time.